back by popular demand, we have some more physics. And uh, we're talking about electricity today. I don't know how good of a job I can do. It won't be too thorough, but um, this will be a little overview of very basic laws that um, inform the mathematics of all modern, well, of all circuitry. I don't know why I said modern. Uh, certainly does uh, explain the modern circuits as well as the old ones. Ohm's law is essentially just a relationship between the voltage and the uh, current and the R represents resistance so that's volts that's current um, and that R is resistance so maybe I'll try to make good use of my colors here so uh, voltage is um, it's the one odd man out so voltage is actually measured in volts and current is measured in amperes and resistance is measured in a thing called ohms and this guy back in I assume the 1800s studied electric circuits along with a guy named Ampere and Volta mm -hmm. I'll keep it in the singular and um, yeah, essentially these are the names of the guys who discovered important electrical properties. So, not to get too confusing there, but they don't have a general, generalized term. Um, you could maybe say it's the, that is the, um, the potential. And um, a good analogy is often pressure in a line, in a water uh, garden hose, an average garden hose, you would so if that's the tip of the garden hose and it's let's see <laughs> we'll pretend that it's uh, connected to the wall there <laughs> so that doesn't really look too good does it but um, if you put, if you put your finger over this and, yeah, if you put it against something to hold the water in and you turn the hose on, the, the line will build up with pressure and, um, think of those as representative of the water molecules there and so uh, I guess when the hose is built up with pressure there's a potential for a outflow of water as soon as this gets opened up and as soon as you release it um, water does start to flow but before you do, 
the water inside it doesn't really move, right? Well, that's kind of the same thing that happens in circuits. If you have a, it's a symbol for a voltage source right there. Um, let's see. Well, no, I'm sorry. That's that's a ground, but you can kind of have that. Uh, let's see. How does it work? It's actually been a while since I drew one of these. All right, the most basic one looks like that. That's the most basic circuit right there. Um, and then here we can, that's positive and that's negative. I might be wrong. Um, and the charges, now I'm probably getting this backwards. It flows from positive to negative. Real quickly, I always think of the charges like negative always absorbs um, positive charges positive charges always um, are attracted to negative charges so positive always has a an outflow of uh, man I forget how to explain that uh, but that's always how I visualized it is that the attraction it's kind of like magnetism you have a positive and a negative north and a south pole one pole you could think of as um, always I'll draw it here If you have a north here, a south there, the magnetic field always goes in the same direction. So if you guys can see that right there, and basically you could almost think of it as the, the field flows from south to north. Um, with electricity, the general formula, the standard way of looking at it is that the field, the electric field, flows. It's, it's kind of like a medium in which they, um, the particles flow through. The electric field is very closely related to the potential right here, so probably it's probably looking very chaotic, but uh, we'll, we'll wrap it and we'll tie it all back in together soon enough. And uh, we'll start by explaining the field here and how it relates to the voltage and then how the voltage informs the current, which we will label I from this equation here. So the voltage is V, the current is I. Um, the resistance is R over there, and the field, before we get back to our hose analogy real quick, the field it can be thought of as flowing from positive to negative. Um, now if you have a negative particle, those two are maybe do something like that if you guys can see that so the negative particle or the negative charge is directing the field toward it I guess that's the easiest way to explain it consistently is that the positive particles are directing the field away from themselves whereas the negative particles are pulling or creating a, some sort of a force towards themselves okay so if you have two negative particles pulling the force towards themselves the fields created it's hard to visualize this one it's easier to visualize two positive particles because they would repel each other
can imagine two things were repelling uh, the force away from it um, would repel each other and two negative particles you can think of it as just make a general rule that two like particles negative or positive if they're the same two negatives or two positives they're going to repel each other and to simplify our drawing again we have a negative and a positive now when they're different particles they're going to attract each other because that simultaneously you have the positive charge creating a repulsion and the negative charge creating an attraction and uh, they're mutually um, symbiotic if they were living so they're they're mutually in concert cooperation agreeable and so if you use that basically just think of a, a voltage is a, a an accumulation of a bunch of positive charges kept at bay from negative charges and if you have a ton of these as positive and negatives attract hope I'm not moving that too much for you guys if you have a ton of these oh, I didn't I guess I was out of camera but um, you create a buildup of charges um, and you do that in batteries all the time uh, through chemical chemical interactions and uh, affinities and um, that's that's engineering so we won't get into that but uh, just take for granted that charges can be engineered or devices can be engineered to create a surplus of positive and a surplus of negative in two different areas so that when you let electricity flow across it immediately or sorry I guess it would go the other way we're gonna we're gonna say it's positive uh, positive to negative right now okay so so um, as long as you have a buildup you have flow across and um, you can think of uh, Hmm. And this is where uh, the brief little side note is that, and I think I might have explained that in another video, is that Benjamin Franklin, when he was deciding upon the notation of electricity, he, he didn't know the, I mean, this was the mid-1700s, you know, so this is 250 years ago well before we knew anything about concrete about the atom and so he realized there was a, a, a dialectic I guess you would say not dialectic uh, a an opposition if you will and he didn't know what the true nature was of this opposition and uh, maybe we still fundamentally don't but what he did notice is that you you can create a potential difference that allows the flow of electricity and he just kind of arbitrarily named one side positive and one side negative um, but what happened in the 19th century is when we got modern engineering and science to shed light on this process we discovered uh, based on his convention that the atom would be positive um, surrounded by a field of negative charges and because the mass of the proton was so much greater than the electron surrounding it we determined that the proton was what gave matter most of its mass and the electrons were superfluous, uh, kind of um, a lot easier to 
to move around and um, didn't make as much of an impact, weren't a significant source of uh, objects, matter, or mass. So I guess I'm getting more and more uh, fundamental here, but uh, the point is that electrons are the thing that we decide actually get transferred between uh, atoms or protons and therefore they're the thing that move so when you have an electric current uh, what's happening is it is actually it's a result of having a bunch of I'm getting really a little bit more chaotic than I thought I would um, If we if we think of this as a really really zoomed in part of a an electrical wire, you know something like this right there. If we have just one of those wires. That wire is made up of metal atoms. Might be copper. We don't really know what. But if you zoom in really far and pretend it's a really thin wire. And these are the individual atoms and that's the nucleus that's positive and each atom might have a bunch of electrons surrounding it so while the atoms themselves that make up the, the mass what we would consider the uh, the material of the metal they don't move but the electrons attached to those atoms can be interchanged and when they move sometimes they can if uh, one hole opens up one electron can jump over to another nucleus as long as the uh, the chemistry of that works out and so essentially think of electricity as the movement of just the negative uh, negative particles or electrons but simultaneously what gets kind of confusing is that you can kind of sometimes they like to think of it as holes <laughs> um, you know you know what I won't get into that that's too confusing um, but you can imagine if an electron moved from this atom to this atom or proton to proton this one would be left with a one less electrical negative charge this one would gain in a negative charge. So this one might have been a charge of negative three. If it loses one, and let's say this one's a charge of uh, negative four. Um, let's say negative two. All right, so if this atom originally had a charge of negative three and we lose an electron to this atom here now what you did was transfer the negative charge and we can just simply say this now instead of negative two it has a it gained a, a negative electron negatively charged electron and now its charge is negative three and this one lost an electron so its charge is now negative two so mm -hmm. you can think of it as gaining if you lose a negative charge you're kind of like you're gaining a positive charge so that's sometimes how the mathematicians and electrical engineers like to think of it but uh, but we're not gonna that was the extent of uh, how much I'm able to t teach that because I, I clearly don't know enough to be able to teach that in any um, easy to understand way. But where I was getting at with all this is that fundamentally you have a collection of positive and a collection of negative charges. And it's the movement of the electrons through the field 
created by these accumulation of opposing charges that is what a current is electricity um, is what really electricity is so all right that's a good background I guess so maybe we'll uh, we'll go ahead and stop there and we'll talk actually about how this law applies in the next video so I hope that you're not more confused than you were at the beginning uh, but uh, but if you were if you are we'll hopefully clear that up in the next video so I'll see you then and uh, if you aren't already sleep well <laughs>